give you a little garden update. I'm going to show you this morning's harvest and kind of go over what I'm going to make with it. And um, I think you're going to be pretty surprised. I'm going to show some pictures at the end. So um, I had my grandson over last night and I took a picture of him in the zucchini. And I think you'll be shocked. It'll give you a little bit of an idea of how big these plants are. And literally, I just did good garden soil and chicken manure because I know a lot of you are going to ask. And um, the, apparently, it worked. So let's go outside and see what mid July's garden looks like and uh, yeah, and the harvest from this morning. I am so excited. Okay, so forgive me because I cannot find my microphone, but um, here are squash blossoms, most of which are by themselves like this and I'm going to stuff these and if you'd like to see a recipe on stuffed squash blossoms I will do that. I also stuff the squat the blossom down here and cook the baby zucchini sometimes so that one's a little bit bigger than I like to do. This is about the right size and then I got these three and this variety of zucchini as you can see it's ribbed. This is a Romanesca. This is the perfect size to pick them. They, um, it takes them quite a while to be, get seeds and stuff. So tomatoes were almost, in fact, that's pretty close to enough tomato for a tomato pie. And I might actually make a tomato pie using the squash blossoms, the zucchini, and the tomatoes. I haven't decided, but let's go outside and I'll show you where okay, these so came from. Here we go. And it's a little windy, so I'm going to try to speak clearly. I've got a little breeze blowing. So the deck, of course, I've still got these lettuces and um, the herbs and all that. I'm going to I'm gonna dry some mint here pretty quick and some rosemary. And um, I've been using the rosemary. It's wonderful. Um, and, of course, I'm using the lettuces. And look, a little stray lettuce. Uh, ended up in there and some over here and this is delicious buttery leaf lettuce it's wonderful look at all those peppers these I'm trying this first one over here is starting to turn I don't know if you can see that it's a stuffed in there inside but it is there's a pepper starting to turn because these get red and they're the sweet heat variety and over here same thing Look at how beautiful. I just love these. I'm dying to try one. I really, I just want to pick one and see how much heat they have. <clears throat> but I still have not transplanted my pole beans. I need to get those in the ground. So I guess I'm going to have to go get some soil. And down here, we've got tomatoes and dill. Look at that dill. Holy moly. Now I planted some dill from seed too, and it's coming up. The cucumbers are just loaded, but oh, I'm so impressed. Look at my ancho chilies. Aren't these beautiful peppers? Look at that. They're almost to size. There's uh, quite a few on this plant. And then I've got um, serrano peppers, jalapeno. Uh, I see a couple serranos over there. And I've got a habanero, and it's actually trying to produce habaneros. So tomatoes. Now, this the one that's vining so much is an heirloom. It's called a glacier. And you can see by the leaves, they're a little different than a regular tomato leaf. Like this is a regular tomato plant. They, they're kind of, um, they're softer. And the cell makeup on these <clears throat> is different because they don't, um, they can withstand the cold um, more so than a regular tomato. So let's get back over here. Ooh, there's another tomato I could pick. So uh, I'm gonna leave that on there one more day, I guess. It's just about there though. And these, these little plants really produce a lot. These are the Oregon Springs. I'm very impressed. Nice big tomatoes. And you can see the pimentos are coming on, pimento peppers. And more tomatoes. My goodness, look at this. Look at this big. Now that's a uh, Celeste tomato plant. Um, we've got Early Girl, uh, Stupus, and those are smaller tomatoes. Um, and then there's a, the one down here is a celebrity. I put one celebrity in, but I, I think I really like the Celeste and 
I have one Roma somewhere around here. Oh, look at the size of this. That's a, that's a, um, pimento. And they don't get huge. Pimento peppers are not big, but they definitely have a different flavor than a bell. So, as you can see, the bed frame as a, um, something to trellis on is working out really good. I did have to start by tying them, and I apologize for the helicopter, but look at, I got, oh, I got a ladybug climbing on the cucumber in there. Now, this is the slicing variety, but as you can see, there's tons of them. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so as I was saying, <laughs> um, the cucumbers are loaded. I mean, there's just everywhere you look, there's cucumbers. And these are the slicers on this end. And then down on this end, they're even more loaded. And these are the pickling cucumbers. I see a couple, though. Well, maybe not. That might need to be pinched off. But look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I just, I'm so thrilled with how well these are doing. And as you can see, it's grabbing on to the, the headboard without a problem okay so um this is a, oh and there are i'll have to go around the other side look at the look at the pretty uh succulent i just love it and we've been getting rain every day so i haven't had to water the last couple of days and the leeks are delicious i've used them a couple of times and as you can see they're starting to get some size to them if you if you look at my hand now i'll use these bigger ones now and they will lend so much flavor and you can actually use the leaves and stuff right now because they're still pretty tender. They cook down. Okay, beans, green beans, holy moly, um, were loaded, which is good because I want to can a bunch of green beans. And somewhere in here are big, beautiful heads of red romaine. This romaine is delicious. And I'm trying to keep the beans and the cucumbers back away so I can at least get nice big. This one's starting to form a head, but I keep picking on the leaves too. And over here, more romaine in the midst. I trimmed back these tomatoes. There's aroma in here, as you can see. Um, and these, this is the serrano. I believe it's the serrano pepper, the habanero pepper, and the mammoth dill. I guess there's a reason for them to call it that. Okay, and I think there's a carrot in here that I can pick for you guys to show you what these guys, yeah, are supposed to look like. So these are just like a radish sized carrot, and they're delicious. They are wonderful. So I'm gonna pick a couple for salad later. And you just slice them up. Just like a radish. Okay. So these are the beans that need to be transplanted. And then here we have the Goliath. And that is, well, as you can see how tall it is. It's the biggest zucchini plant I've ever had. And I've had this variety every year for years. Any of you that have been following me know that I love this variety of zucchini. <clears throat> this is the Romanesca. And I usually get it from... <clears throat> the seeds from Franke, but I can't even get it in the camera. Look at that. Now, I took a picture of my grandson sitting in between those last night to give you a perspective. But the bottom of that deck comes to my shoulder, basically, just below my shoulder. And I'm five feet, so yep. There, um, if I stand up here, it's I'm, uh, they're up to my forehead. But look in here i mean this is after i picked this morning there's still blossoms and zucchini and just wonderful i'm so excited i planted this i'm missing the yellow squash though because the slugs ate it but that's okay look at i mean how glorious and here's my view i know you guys like my view <clears throat> let's go down here and look at the rhubarb this is what I've got to fill in. This bed, I've got to get the huh, wildflowers out of there. But the rhubarb's doing really good. 
I'm very happy. This is a perfect spot for it. I'm going to put the pole beans here along the fence, get the dirt filled in, uh, get some more cardboard down and weed blocker basically, and um, get the pole beans in here. And then um, I will be done planting f until fall. And then in the fall, I'll plant my garden or my my garlic and um, oh, well, it looks like Shotzi is helping herself to <laughs> a carrot. It's okay. Go get it. Get it. Get the carrot. Is that yours? Yep. <laughs> hey, it's okay. I'll share. <laughs> so guys, I hope it inspires you to try your hand at container gardening and raised bed gardening. Somebody asked me, why don't I just plant in the ground? Well, up here, it's really, really rocky. And I have no desire to pull weeds all summer. Um, container gardening, you have very little weeds. And what you do have, they just zip right out if you do get a weed. I haven't had to pull a weed one. And um, in the ground, I'd be pulling weeds every single day to try to keep up on it and keep them from overtaking my plants. And so that's one of the reasons why I loved raised bed garden. And I was switching over to all raised beds anyway when I moved from Nevada. So. Here's another helicopter. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe, garden update, and/or.